Hi, this is Mike. Welcome to Chug Beat. Hi there, uh, Mark here. It's uh, early in the morning. Yeah, uh, nobody's around yet. Telephone's not ringing. I've got my coffee. Yeah, uh, and I've got a new product to show off. Yeah, uh, and this will be. I'll try and make this one short. Yeah, uh, but you know how that goes. I wind up talking. Yeah, uh, and so I will. Yeah, uh, every year with this bluefin fishery we've had out here on the west coast. Yeah. Uh, it's it's about an eight year I don't know phenomena uh, as far as these big fish ever since the Fukushima you know, nuclear power plant issue in Japan it seems like to me anyway that's what I correlate it with time wise we've had these big bluefin and it's not to say that we haven't seen them before you know, usually it's been a northern phenomena or I'll say Oregon because I'm aware of that for over 20 years with these great big freight train 200 plus pound fish moving through in September, early October, but usually it's like mid to late September it seemed like nobody you know rigged up for them. You know, and so they you know get some people's interest but nobody's able to catch them. Almost nobody. But we've had this big fishery out here and it's uh, been very successful also in Northern California. And every year, you know, Maybe it's a message board phenomena, um, just like it is with politics and, and, and uh, with, you know, if you do any shopping and you have Facebook open or something like that, all of a sudden you start getting bombarded with ads showing the same crap over and over and over again. It's kind of the same thing you know, with lures. And so every year there's been some new hot lure and there's just been a feeding frenzy on it. And of course everybody fishes that one lure. And so, my God, if you're not fishing this lure, you're not gonna get bit because everybody's fishing the same damn thing. You know, and <laughs> over and over and over again. And so naturally, if that's the only thing that's in the water, that's what the fish are gonna bite. You know, you get it in front of the fish at the right time. You know, it's, it's gonna be successful. So, you know, we sometimes forget about what was successful the year before, or the year before that, or the year before that. One thing for sure, as a private motor, you know, when I would motor out, and if I saw any flying fish around, my confidence level would always go up, because where the flyers are, you know, typically you're going to have some other activity you know, with predatory fish going after them. And I think Randy Penny over at United Composite put it to me in a, in a way that you know, made a lot of sense said, Mark, you know, I've got a theory about these flying fish and tuna. The reason why tuna go after them, these bluefin, the elephant, so much. He says, they're just pissed off. These poor, <laughs> these tuna have been seeing these damn things over and over and over again. They'll come up on them, you know, they'll see them at the circus, they'll come up on them, and the doggone flying fish scooters away, and they never get to, you know, to eat the damn thing. And that's the reason why they're so vicious, <laughs> and they hit them with such aggression. Yeah, it's that frustration angle, you know, with it. I don't know. I can't get inside of a fish's brain to be sure, but no doubt, it's a pretty good meal you know, on a flying fish. And, you know, everybody loves to eat them except for maybe people because they stink. But in any event, <clears throat> flying fish. A few years ago, Fish Labs, well, a few years ago, two years ago at ICAST, Fish Labs came out with something that was kind of cool. You know, and it was along the lines of the flying fish. Now, what we've been using out here for these flyers were live flying fish, you know, could be popsicles frozen, and we'd stick on, you know, some popsicle sticks on the wings to make them stick out, you know, and fly them off a kite, you know, sometimes on the drift, but usually it'd be balloon or kite, you know, to get them away from the boat. And then came the artificials. And on the artificials, this is one of the better ones you know, that we sell. And they do these in two sizes, very durable material, good wings, you know, everything you know, would be replaceable in that sense. You know, but damn good lure. You know, and they've gotten bit. Another one, you know, Meg Bay, put one on the market. This is more of a drift bait. You know, wings are pretty stiff, you know, you know, it, good size obviously, you know, but you'd, this would be one that often you know, would be tossed off the bow of a boat, let it get way the hell out there you know, and just go ahead and put the reel in gear and wait for something to happen. So you could do something else in addition and have this thing out there. Similar to the, that other you know, flyer I showed. And then of course says Nomad had a hard body uh, version. And all these things can be used on the kite, uh, they can be used on the drift, they can be used maybe even slow trolling you know, with some effectiveness. But, and, and they're effective. 
But there is another way to do things, and that's what you know, the folks at Fish Lab did. They came out with a strap-on. Yes, indeed, it's a strap-on. There's a little harness, and there's a pin. And so you take your mackerel or your mullet, you put the harness on it back behind the head, you know, obviously, where the wings would normally go. Um, and now you've made a, a fake flying fish out of a bait that's a lot easier to catch and a lot more prevalent. Yeah. And you can do the same damn thing with it. Yeah. And it's going to taste more natural to a fish when they hit it. So they're more apt to, to grab onto it instead of spitting it out early. Yeah. And they're cheap. This doggone bio flyer is something that runs around I don't know, about 15 bucks, less than 20 bucks. Yeah. And you can have on the boat. It doesn't weigh anything, doesn't take up much space. And you can go ahead and, and create a flyer, stick it out there behind your boat, and you have it in the water. Not a bad idea, you know, and, and if you're in an area where the flyers aren't, well, you know what, the tuna move around. <laughs> and so you may not have flyers there today, but the tuna remembers what that meal looks like, and they're bound to go for it. So I think it's kind of cool. It's not a big investment. It's easy to install. Basically, you put the harness around the fish. There's a little pin in here. Pin that through the Mac, and now you've got a winged bait sitting out there, and you can use it on the drift or whatever. Not very expensive, neat little piece, kind of creative. Uh, this is from Fish Labs. Fish Labs is also uh, a company that's owned by um, Okuma. So, use it on the kite, use it on the drift. Um, nice little piece, nice little piece. And a, a lot better than spending 150 bucks for a big chunk of plastic, uh, uh, I think. I, you know, I think it'll be effective and worth a try. And even if you're in Northern California uh, and you're thinking, you know, water up here isn't as clean as it is down south, and maybe that's the reason why you know, guys aren't using the flying fish. Well, it's one more thing you can go ahead and put in your arsenal um, and run. And don't forget about what's been used in the past. Um, these big bluefin, they will eat poppers. They will eat jigs down deep. You know, they'll eat the flying fish. They'll eat a slow trolled mackerel you know, off a downrigger about three knots. You know, even a, a Nomad DTX minnow in a, in a mackerel sardine pattern. You know, those have been successful over the years. So don't forget, you've got a lot of different ways to approach that fishery. You know, and don't get hooked in on the message boards and social media and just you know have a real narrow focus on. Have a wide focus. Lots of different ways to catch a fish. You know, you can do it, you know, just get out there and put the time in. And especially as fuel costs go up, it surprised me last year to see guys, you know, going after the high speed trolling game, you know, exclusively and forgetting about those things that worked prior years. The fish haven't changed, you know, they'll still go after that. It's just one more tool in the arsenal. Well, here's another tool for you. Thanks for watching. I'll be back again. Yeah, it's winter time. We'll try to get a few more videos up here. Yeah, next week I'm going to be out. My you know, wife and I are going to um, uh, Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, I'm not going to do any fishing. She's going to sit there with uh, drinks with an umbrella and enjoy a few days of, of relaxing. Yeah, so that's the plan yeah, next week. So no videos next week or whatever. I won't be around, but I'll be back after and we'll see you know, what comes from there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for using our, our YouTube channel. Uh, again, the videos are posted YouTube, Rumble, you know, BitChute, and Odyssey. Uh, so a few different platforms we're going with just in case you know, we get censored, knocked off, or whatever uh, on, that, uh, on the YouTube platform. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching our video. We're just on YouTube, Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble. Please visit us online or in store. Bye!